Okay, we'll make a start. Uh, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, we're going to have a talk by Daisy Giggling Babelfish on how to be a giggling babelfish. And uh, she will be accepting uh, questions at certain points. She'll tell you when she wants them. So over to you, Daisy. Hi, everyone. I'm Daisy. And this down here on my top is called Phineas. Phineas the fish. And he is my mascot. And some might say the founding member of the club of Giggling Babelfish. And today, me and Phineas want to talk to you about how to be a giggling babelfish. Now, I know what you were probably thinking, right? You're probably thinking along the lines of what is a giggling babelfish? And for that matter, what do I mean by being one? Well, I know at the risk of sounding like I'm at an alcoholic anonymous meeting, I am Daisy and I am am a giggling babelfish. And how have I done this? Well, I know I'm not supposed to tell you my story today, but to tell you what I mean, I'm going to need to tell you a little bit of it. You see, two years ago, I got diagnosed at the age of 24. And it was on the same month as my birthday, which I could describe as the best and longest lasting present of my life. And I soon found the club then. When I met a girl at an ASD girls only meetup group and misunderstood her, when she said that she wanted to do an art event for ASD appreciation, to be the same event, but not for art, art, just a general party or event. And I wanted to do something for it then. Entertainment wise, that is. And I do drama a lot, but Somehow doing a sketch or play didn't work that, as an idea, so I turned to comedy. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never understood the difference between a comedian and a comic. Obviously, I'm not a magazine filled with superheroes, that's not what I mean. But in the world of comic entertainment, what the heck is the difference? To me, at least, they are the same. They're both funny and make people laugh. And anyway, don't clowns do both? So I think I'm going to call myself a plain closed clown. So what is a giggling babelfish? Or has anyone here ever heard of or watched or even listened to The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Well, I hope it's out of copyright. So I kind of borrowed the term from there. You see, in the story, for those who don't know, they put a weird looking, I guess you can call it a fish thing. Personally, I don't know what it is, but they put it in their ear and it translates in all the languages of the universe for the person who's got it in their ear. So why is a fable fish giggling in this name? Because it's translation through humour. So Phineas and me, would like you to join us in being in the club of giggling babelfish by hopefully laughing with people like me, yourselves and others, rather than at people, obviously. After 25 years though, I think I'll start by saying that when after 25 years I've, of mimicking normal people or NTs as you might call them, I think I can convince myself that I'm normal. Why am I doing this every time I say normal or NT? Because I don't actually know what the terms mean. Because what is normal anyway? Other than Boga. And what is NT for that matter? I mean, how do you define who is and isn't NT? For instance, I believe that the word neurotypical began in the ASD community to mean someone who thinks in the conventional or normal, it might be, sense. But as I just said, is there such thing as a normal person? What about other people who are not on the spectrum, but are, um, don't think in the normal or conventional way? Like dyslexic people, for instance. 
for instance, my mum and me are both dyslexic, but I'm the only one out of us who is autistic. So does that mean my mum is NT or not NT? Or is she NT in one way but not the other? It gets so confusing, right, um, to talk about it, that you can get so confused just talking about it. I don't even know what's just come out of my mouth because it's so confusing. So I would encourage you guys to start using quotation marks in your head when you use the words NT or normal or normal person because it is confusing. Obviously don't go around doing this because that would just be time consuming people to stare at you and it'd be weird. But just do it in your head, just put a bit of irony into it. Now talking of confusing, which by the way did used to be my catchphrase before I got diagnosed, I do not understand NTs. Has anybody here ever heard of or read about or listened to the book Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus? It explains how men and women are so different in their psychology, they might as well be from different planets. That translates for everybody, but for the opposite sex, that one. Well, for me, if men are from Mars and women are from Venus, the Nentes are from Alpha Centauri. I mean, they do things like ask you, how are you? When they don't actually give a damn for the answer. So why are we asking then? And why are they so surprised when we answer? And the thing is, right, how are we supposed to understand each other if they do silly things like that, and we can't communicate normally ourselves. I mean, I want to know to describe my cat as neurotic, which for those who don't know what it means, it's a nervous and uptight being. I said erotic, which I hope I don't have to explain. And I would just say that it's sexual, but if I have to explain any more, I'm going to go bright red, so don't ask me to go any further. And, um, if by the way, that wasn't embarrassing enough, I once described an energetic dog as the, Jurus, the Jurex bunny. Well, I remember the Duracell bunny. <laughs> Please don't ask me what a Durex is. I refuse to answer that question. So that's hard. And on top of that, what makes our lives apparently even harder is apparently we speak like a robot. Knock, knock, who's there? Not me, ha, ha, maybe I should call myself a robotic plainclothes clown, who knows? Anyway, so I, if I can't even use the right words for things, and they say things they don't mean, like, how are you? How are we supposed to understand each other? And that's why it's so important to translate through humour. Because come on, what isn't funny about being ASD, right? I mean, it's confusing, it's contradictory, it's paradoxical, it's, yeah. And um, what about that wouldn't make you laugh? And if I haven't persuaded you with my irony, how about this? If you don't laugh, you cry. So you might as well just laugh at things because it's easier. I mean, after years of having my diagnosis, I still don't get myself. So how are NTs supposed to get me if I don't even get myself? I mean, I do things like, I can't do everyday, easy, simple, if dark tasks like unpack a dishwasher. But I can do complex, difficult things like write, perform, produce a play, all by myself. Sometimes I don't even understand why I get so overwhelmed at things. I mean, for instance, the other day, I felt myself going into an anxiety attack over the idea of making pasta and meatballs on my own. Thing is, it's not that I don't know how to do it. It's not hard for me. I don't know how to do it. It's just boiling some pasta and then the pas in the boiled water and then grilling some meatballs and then probably putting some tomatoes in the microwave to heat them up. That's easy for me. I don't know why I panicked, I just did. It's like one of those dreams where you start screaming the house down in your sleep over something that's totally not scary. I mean like, oh, there's a fly in my nose, there's a fly in my nose. What? 
actually, I did have a dream like that once where I started screaming for house down in my sleep of the fact that I saw a random praying mantis on a random roof and a random tree and a random conservatory my gran has none of. Weird, hey? Anyway, so the thing is, right, we don't make it easy for us or them, do we, Try to understand this, that is. What with all these fancy terms and words that keep popping up for things? I mean, I'll be honest, I can't keep up with them, so how are they supposed to? Kind of reminds me of things, at, trying to learn things at school. Like, the time in science when I was taught that atoms have protons, electrons and neutrons. Only to find out that, as a boy said to the teacher at the time, You lied to us, miss! Because, um, apparently there is no such thing as a neutron, it's just protons and electrons stuck together. Or, for the fact that I have just completely given up on whether Pluto is a planet or not. I mean, it's chopping and changing so much in my lifetime, I just give up trying to keep up with it. I mean, it's a planet, it's not a planet, it's a planet, it's an elephant. What the heck is it? I mean, for instance, when I was first told about my ASD, my first thought was an illegal drug. Only it's not called that now, is it? It's either ASC or just plain AS. Or the fact that to me, I am an Aspie, which, by the way, sounds like an asthmatic donkey to me. I mean, doesn't it? I mean, <laughs> doesn't it? Only, apparently, Aspie is no longer used. Only, I don't think that Aspies have got this memo, because I know people who still use it. Maybe it's so hard for us to keep up with things because hard is change is hard and anyway for us. I mean I still use ASD purely on the fact that that's what it was called when I was diagnosed. And what about all these acronyms or shortenings for long sentences? Like ASD, was it C or AS? Anyway, but also like NT. You have to remember what they all stand for too. Like, does NT stand for neurotypical or neuroatypical? Or is it no tomatoes? Or not today? Or my personal favourite, the National Theatre. Okay, so you can understand why it gets a little confusing. So let's be giggling babelfish and translate some of the harder terms of the ASD community for the NTs, but with humour, as that's what giggling babelfish do. Now, I've prepared some myself, but you might like to come up with some in a minute and tell me some, or maybe at the end. The first one that I have chosen as an example is sensory input, which I think means good at multitasking or numb or fireproof. Then there are the three levels, which I think is how hard is the level of the game? Let's understand this ASD person. And then you have eloping, going away to marry the silence. Sensory overload is next, which I think is deciding to marry the silence. And then there is ASD breakdown um, or autistic breakdown, which I think is falling in love with or getting engaged to the silence. And then the last, but definitely not least, is the special interest, which I think equals obsession. You see, I think the art of giggling babel fishery is to look at things that need translation, like terminology, and find the common yeah. known of it. Let's take these three, for example. An ASD or autistic breakdown, a sensory overload, and eloping. To me, with first term sensory input, it tells me a story. It tells me that 
you, the main character, are getting a lot of noise, etc. You get a bit overwhelmed by it, i.e. a sensory overload. This causes you to have a reaction called an ASD breakdown, which causes you to find a way to try and calm down, which by the way, in acting is called a call to action. For those who don't know, a call to action is something in the story, but it starts the action itself, either the action, it's action in an action movie or the love or the adventure or the horror. For example, in Gandalf, in a, <laughs> sorry, in The Hobbit, when Gandalf tells Bilbo Baggins to stop being such a recluse and get off his ass and go and have an adventure, that is a call to action. So, let's look at the stories of this, shall we? Eloping in a non-ASD definition is when a man and woman run off to get married, usually because the family does not approve of the marriage. So in this version, the, the love affair is the call to action. The woman is the main character and the action is to run off and get married to the man. So what I do is I compare the action of having an ASD breakdown to the action of falling in love or getting engaged to the man. The noise is the family, the family, and the need for less sensory input is the marriage. So the action equals eloping. See what I did there? Now, I would love a quick go if anybody would like to give me an, a quick example if they thought of. Maybe in the comments section or if they want to call out. You mean like a, um, like a term for NTs to, like, to translate for the... Yes, okay. so that they, it doesn't have to be super precise, but it has to be able to make sense to both of you. So, you know, um, I've done some um, ones like um, Obsession, which for NTs would understand because they won't understand the fact that it's always in our head. And we know that it, it can be overwhelming too. So... Therefore, it, it has to be able to join that link. Okay, then, then let's try the term synesthesia. Okay. So when your brain connects, um, uh, for example, letters with emotions or um, numbers with colors. So if different sensory uh, parts of the brain get like connected that in neurotypical brains usually don't get connected. And that seems really random to people. Yes, so can you think of a funny way that an NT would be able to understand? Okay, so kind of fan fiction for numbers? And that would do, that would do quite well. If it, if it makes sense to you and it makes sense to them, it doesn't have to be super accurate. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If anybody else ha wants to have a go at the end, they'll have plenty of time to answer at the end. So, because I'm running out of time now. So, let's carry on. Talking of definitions, it's not just the terminology in specialist languages that entities do not get. Sometimes they're just used to understanding what we want to need. So I think we should translate some of the key issues which come up in our lives too. I've come up with some and we can discuss some at the end, which is coming up soon. So the first one is a hug or cuddle, which I think means a claustrophobic nightmare or a squeeze or loving suffocation. The next one is talking about your special interest. Again, rant or lecture because people do not understand why we're doing that. The last but not least, to me anyway, are pets. Great, warm, cuddly friends which are good for therapy, counselling, medication, if I can find a picture, and release. Okay, so you can see that being a giggling babel fish can be very useful by now, I hope. And 
I know that it's definitely been for me. After all, they're pretty useless at our understanding us, aren't they? Not for just one way. I don't understand them either, to be fair. They're kind of a bit like pets, only I think pets understand us more. Don't they? I can't find a picture again. Okay. I hope. So you kind of have to train them a bit like more hopeless Lucius pets. And I find the best way of doing that is with humour, dark, irony, sarcasm. You choose which types or type you use. But this is why we need more of your giggling fable fish around. So let's all join together today and make a giggling fable fish movement. And I would love to tell you about how to do that, but I'm running out of time and you guys are stressing me out, so I'm going to talk to my therapist outside. Be back in a minute for questions. Any questions? <laughs> Is there any questions or what does I'm going to have a go at a terminology? Is it um, also useful to use the same technique for irritating stuff that neurotypicals do to make sense of them? Yeah, absolutely. It's just a way of translation. So uh, if you feel that that's something that you would really like to do, then go for it. Any other questions? I, I, I have not a question, but, um, okay. but I, I put it in the chat, but I'll say it um, as well. Um, you know how autistic people, when we talk to each other, tend to have longer turns. Um, so I have a lot to say, and then you have a lot to say. I call this cooperative monologuing. Absolutely. That's a brilliant one. You might like to write a little definition down, everybody, if you come up with what them. Um, because it might well help you. And you can also get the NTs to do it for you and give them a little book. I like to repeat something I said in one of the smaller groups yesterday that the, the fact that many autistic people knowingly or like unknowingly like tend to flock towards each other and find each other. And I like to call that um, magnetism absolutely it's like it's like attracts like isn't it okay thanks very much daisy thank you everybody for coming and joining i hope you really enjoyed it